So, I'm here with Gav. Gav Axman Spins here. Hello. And uh, we're off to a record fair. Uh, if you follow my channel, you'll know that I don't go to very many record fairs. But he's dragged me out against my will today to spend some of my money. So he's just been telling me about a record fair he At went to moment, Malvern. Yeah, last weekend, yeah. Um, so, sadly, despite me braving yellow weather warnings and all kinds of uh, shenanigans, um, it was a bit disappointing because every record was too expensive, I thought. Um, so they were charging 10 quid for very basic 80s kind of bean fodder. Alison Moyet's first album, Alf, that you see that everywhere for a couple of quid, don't you? That was yes, 10, 10 quid. So, <laughs> so, so the minute I walked in, that was the first thing I saw. Uh, us, it was only a pound to get in. I went round for half an hour and tooled off. Um, but there's a really good record shop in the Morgans, so I went there instead. And I've, been there. There. Yeah. I've been there. I've been there. You got the cheap section. Yeah, yeah. Got yeah. four, four, five pound albums and one ten pound album from the, the cheaper section. Did yeah, this, this record shop in Malvern, um, which is in Worcestershire, which is in the west of England, it's got. Um, it's got like an, a regular record shop where things are lots of new stock, and it's it's got some pretty pretty good prices, but they're not like cheap. But he's got a little bit of an annex that uh, is full of detritus, <laughs> including a basement that's got loads of like classical stuff and all that. I still didn't get and I, basement. And I quite like that stuff, but you could easily spend three or four hours in there trying to find some some goodies and there are when oh, i yeah. was there it was pretty good it's not yeah, bad no, i was quite impressed too I, yeah. Yeah, and, it, and again there was stuff he was selling for five but the record fair were trying to sell for ten um so yeah I went. Uh, that was by far the the result um of the week that was so what else what else have you been doing in terms um, of buying records i found a, a really good place in staffordshire an antique center uh, and that was pretty reasonable. Um, that, that was again better than the record fair. Um, this guy lives in his car looking for records. Of full antique gate shops antique there. centre that was. So, yeah. uh, so I took my wife there pretending we were going out to look at antiques, <laughs> but obviously I happened to think there might be some records. Do you there. not think you would have caught on by now because you're always it's doing 20 that. years, she still hasn't tweaked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then um, where did I go? Now? And then I found oh, the best one, um, Leamington Spa. I went there last yeah. week. Do, uh, he's this week, this four for ten pounds. I'll talk about that in yeah, a minute. I did yeah. really well there. So I was whether I got lucky and I managed to find, but yeah, four for a tenner. Yeah. Happy with that. And they had a fantastic uh, collection of Vertigo swirls. Yeah, I saw some of that. Yeah, they're two copies of the Mayor Blitz album that I was looking for. They weren't four for ten pounds though. But, uh, no, but they were like uh, 150, 200 pounds. Yeah. But I, somebody, somebody um, pointed pointed me in the direction of uh, a reissue. That was similar. Well, it was not similarly overpriced, but it was overpriced. But I found a good new copy on eBay for about twenty-five quid, so uh, it was an absolute uh, uh, killing for me. I was really happy about that. Like, yeah, no, yeah. So that that was probably the best shop um, thing. I went to that one in the new one in Henley on Arden. That's the one that. Oh, the one. Yeah, I've been there. And too you, pricey. You're too pricey. Absolutely right. There. But what was weird there? The cheap stuff was expensive. Like you so see, your 80s bog standard stuff was like eight or nine quid, and it got <laughs> seven or eight copies, which I couldn't understand. But I found a, a 90s Lenny Kravitz album, uh, which a one? third one. Are you going to go my way? Yep. And that was 20 quid, and it said Nia Mint on it, and it, it I, I bought it, and it was. But when I looked it up when I got out, that's a 60, 70 pound record, so I couldn't quite understand. The the cheap stuff was ridiculously expensive, and the expensive stuff wasn't too bad. A very strange. Uh, I've got a copy. I, I bought a copy of that one, which had a CD insert in the cover, so a, a special recess within the album oh, no, cover, this, this is the first which which this where which has like a CD of live versions or something. I've, I've still got it, of course. But yeah, I bought so, that. So bought yeah. that soon after it came out, I guess. So I was quite happy. So that yeah. weirdly, I found a really good buy there, but but I didn't buy anything else. I just bought that. Um, so yeah, that was that's been. It's because of my birthday week, so I've just been here, there, and everywhere. Yeah. Fortuitous in the family took me some money, so I had a, an excuse to actually spend without guilt. So uh, you need, quite nice. Oh, okay, you, you don't. Doesn't happen very often. You need an excuse to spend without guilt. That's the that's the important part. Well, I uh, I've done. I've shopped in three locations in the last three weeks or something like that. So I've had I've shopped for records in Lancaster, um, in the northwest, which was. Um, 
at an outdoor market stall. The guy doesn't have a shop, I don't believe. Um, but it's uh, good prices, not bad. Yeah. So I bought some stuff and they're in a bag. Then I went to Newcastle and went to a couple of places there. One I've not been to for years and years and years. Yeah. Uh, Beatdown Records, I think it is, and it's got the loyalty card. So oh, for every tenner you spend, they stamp this card like at, no, uh, at, at Costa or Starbucks or wherever they do it. So I've got that um, in my back pocket next time I go. And then, of course, I went to Leamington as well this week. Yes. Yeah. So, I, so I also picked some four for 10 quid because you go that far because it's about, it's about an hour you've got to buy something. Yeah, yeah. So I ended up buying these, uh, these records. So I've got this haul, this November haul, in three separate plastic bags that I, that I've not opened up since I brought them home. So some of them are like three weeks old, and I haven't even opened them. Never mind played them. But it's I did a I did a video in the order sorry in the summer saying July was a particularly um, big haul of a month, and I thought well it doesn't happen very often. Here I am just a few months later as another big haul, and we're off to a record fair. Yeah, no, this this so, one today is um, free entry, so that's good. Uh, yeah. Got. To cafe and food and stuff as well. Uh, but I was talking. I'm to on a lunch date, I think. Lunch date. John, the six-inch pianist. Um, yeah. And he said this one's good because it's only every three months. And um, can you turn the heat down here? It's yeah, a bit yeah. warm. The dealers. It's yeah. the thought of buying records. Isn't it? The dealers um, uh, are pretty good here. Very really good. So we shall see. There's another channel that buys a lot from here. It's a guy with the pink. No, no, we've joined like a health club, and oh. um, so I'm three or four mornings a week. I'm going out for a swim and a, a bit of a bit of time in the gym, coming with the intention of coming back and making a video and a, I grab a piece of cake and a cup of coffee and I just, I just sit down on my backside. So I'm I'm watching other stuff, um, and a, a lot of in my feed is the, the vinyl community videos aren't popping up, so. I have to do a little bit of digging to see even some of my regulars, um, uh, as it were. So, um, so I'm a little bit out of touch. So we'll, uh, we shall see. Yeah, anyway, I'm we'll, impressed. we'll, we'll. I'm impressed uh, with the health kick day. That's very, uh, very good. Yeah, um, well, so I'm, I'm just drinking coffee and eating biscuits. Really, that's my kind of uh, lifestyle. Well, I, I think I think my 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 medium term plan is that um, I'm going to go to uh, MGK in Boston's. Um, Party next July. Oh, and you've got to you've got to make it through to uh, Den Bosch, haven't you? Oh yeah, Den, Den Bosch, Bosch, of course. Yeah, Bosch, yeah, 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 yeah. The ultimate record fair. Yeah. Anyway, which, which French vinyl addict was saying was really expensive in the uh, order just about three weeks ago. So uh, I, I'm gonna go with a with a short list, short list and yeah. money in a zipped up pocket because I've got a feeling that I'm not going to be going through the cheap bins there. No, I think and it's... Even though I'm taking the car, but yeah. we'll see. I think that one's yeah. got to be yeah. specific grail type to try yeah. and find the unusual Yeah, but they're not, ex they're not cheap, so there's a good chance I'm going to come back with a handful of records. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. It's more, a trip. It's a trip. The, yeah, it's yeah. companionship and all that. Belong. Yeah. So anyway, we're going to Morsley, so we'll see you in a bit. So we've arrived early bird, 20 minutes early, to get the 50p records, right? Yeah. And the 50p not... Vertigo Swirls, is that what it is? Apparently, yeah. Two for a pen. Yeah, he is straight into his <laughs> classic rock. Classic rock, so I'll start there, know what I'm doing. Let me just do this box, mate, before I, just in case. Well, I'm already 130 quid down on new albums, sealed albums. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to buy any records today. Oh, look, it's even cheaper. Oh, I've got a few cards. Oh, 
So, Gav, marks out of 10 for um, for this fair. I would give it a solid 8. 8 out of 10? Yeah, if I could have got a burger from a lunch, I would have given it a 10. Um, but, yeah, this is a gorgeous spot. Oh, he's looking for some, he's found some bargains. So, Smith's 12 inch for a fiver, you don't see. Yeah, I don't buy 12 inches anymore. Though. I see that sort of this. No. This, I think this is quite reasonable. It's fair. A couple of higher than some. If you find um, the toy dolls. Toy dolls? Yeah. Keep an eye out for them. Keep an eye out for that for me. Or, um, I'll tell you what I'd like. Um, cut the crap by the clash. Because Brian the embryonic robot uh, was shown one fairly recently. It's the only clash album I don't have. And he said it's crap. There is a reason for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he says you never find them. Yeah. Uh, 15 quid though. God. I just don't see them. Do you not? 1991. Ah, so, oh, 90s come. Oh my goodness. Just. I'm pretty sure I've never seen that out and about. It keeps He's just getting... told me something astonishing. Do you want to say that again to the camera? That everything I spend goes on the joint account, so my wife knows every penny. <laughs> Are you kidding? That's, that's my, uh, that's like the angel on my shoulder going. Oh my goodness. Oh. Well, you'll have to carry mine into, my, into our house and pretend they're yours. I need to go and put my tyres on. I've caught them in the heavy metal section. I'm back in the heavy metal section. <laughs> you never grow up, will you? Nah. Keeping it real. Keeping the faith. Although he turned down an Iron Maiden bootleg, do two bootlegs. LP bootleg. Don't do bootlegs. Doesn't do bootlegs. Yeah, can't afford to do bootlegs. <laughs> so I'm back from the record fair. It's a few days later, and I'm going to share with you what I what I bought. Some of the some of which I've listened to, and some that I haven't. So what I normally do at these record fairs is, well, firstly I don't go very often. Two, uh, secondly, it's um, almost all used vinyl. Uh, but occasionally you'll get a stall where the dealer or the seller will be selling new sealed vinyl. Now, I learned this from a record shop owner in Newcastle some time ago, is that the distributor's warehouse will offer, offer up um, discounted, overstocked vinyl albums to retailers to sell. And my experience is, is that some of these overstocks are of some pretty well-known bands or artists uh, that are still being sold for full price, you know, around the corner, as it were. Um, but you've got to move quick because the obvious, the obvious records that, that are uh, of famous artists uh, tend to get sold very quickly and so by time if, if you're coming to a record fair and you're two or three hours into a day and you go to the store selling the new vinyl the good stuff will probably have been taken so what I did on Sunday is <clears throat> I uh, I went straight well I quickly walked around to have a look to see if there was any record uh, dealers that were selling new sealed vinyl and very quickly I realized there was one guy doing that so I rifled through his um, his boxes and this is what I bought now some of this I've not listened to is like I said um, but I'm just gonna quickly rattle through first one this is a perfect example of an album that uh, is going for full price just about everywhere else but it's a double album live for ten pounds and that's Neil Young and the Promise of the Real live in Europe. As I say, it's still sealed, not opened that one up, up yet, but Neil Young, always good value. Uh, another one for, for £10 is a soundtrack by Nick Cave and the great Warren Ellis. 
and that is the Road soundtrack. This is on coloured vinyl, still sealed, not, not listened to that one yet, although I've got the CD. Another one, £10 again, PJ Harvey. Uh -huh. um, I've got um, the album that has the demos for this, but I've not got the original on vinyl, so I'm happy to pick that up as well. So it's 30 quid down straight away. Um, five pounds. These are either 10 pounds or five pounds. Anyway, Johnny Cash's Christmas. This time of year, can't argue with that, can you? Um, this one I have opened and listened to, and this is a band called A Certain Ratio. And this is a double album called Loco Remes Clada. Yeah, Loco Remes Clada. I don't know what that means. Somebody will. It's a double album. Now, A Certain Ratio. Post-punk, Manchester band. Started out in the early 1980s. I heard a few tracks back in the day on John Peel and on a couple of compilations that I just, I thought it was on Pillows and Prayers, but it, they're not on Pillows and Prayers, but I couldn't, I can't find the others. Um, but anyway, it's kind of post-punk, but it's funky. So it uses occasionally um, saxophone, um, but it really grooves. It's really good. It's, 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 it's like New Order, but with a rhythm section that is funky. So it's kind of got New Order, Joy Division feel in places, but it's very varied. I really, really like this. So yeah, that was, uh, I'm very happy to have bought that one. Uh, actually in similar fashion, a band from 77, uh, Wire, um, and a Pink Flag was of course their debut. And uh, I, I got that and I, if you know Pink Flag, you'll know that it's, I think it's got about 25 tracks on it or something like that. Some of them as short as like a minute long, but it's um, it's quirky, it's edgy. Um, it was, it was they, they, were, they were thrown into the uh, the punk genre, but I didn't, I never, they were always kind of a little bit post-punk um, by my judgment. Anyway, they kept going. And every now and again, I've dipped into their catalog and, and picked up a bargain and I picked up this one which is called 1020. Um, single album, I think it might have been a tenor, but really, really good. It's it's kind of edgy, it, it's not like a certain ratio, it's not funky, it's definitely kind of post-punk. Um, it, it's got some kind of driving kind of rhythms, it's it, it kind of, it's got this, uh, this persistent rhythm going on some of the tracks. Um, kind of nice languid kind of vocal style as well over the top really kind of if you like that edgy uh, early nine late 70s early 80s um, kind of feel uh, still going on today and I think this album was recorded in 2020 uh, well it was released in 2020 so yeah it's Wire in 1020 um, another great artist about Blast from the Past I think this one was five pounds and this is Mark Armand, the famous Mark Armand. I love Mark Armand. I think he's absolutely great. Chaos and a dancing star. So yeah, typical Mark Armand, really good. Um, there's one track on here, which uh, I hadn't noticed, features Ian Ar featuring Ian Anderson from Jethro Tull. But yeah, really good. Typical Mark Armand sound. Um, this is by, this is the Band of Holy Joy, Neon Primitives, this was five pounds. And this, I bought this because it features on bass Mark Beasley, who was in a band called Rothko, who I quite like. And uh, Gavax Man Spins actually gifted me a solo album by Mark Beasley, which I really like. And, but listening to this, listen to, listen to it once, not impressed. Kind of sounds really thin. Um, and inconsequential. Lovely cover though, isn't it? Lovely cover. But yeah, not impressed with that one. Um, this one is uh, Ryuichi or Ruichi Sakamoto. Toop, two up. And this is um, ah Sakamoto and Toop. So Ryuichi Sakamoto and David Toop. 
And this is an album called... I don't know what it's called, actually. Oh, yeah, it's called. Here we are. Garden of Shadows and Light. And these are two pieces that were recorded in London. And it was an improvised concert. And it is... It's kind of got no rhythm. It's it's really kind of ambient, although there's some dissonance that kicks in um, in a couple of places. I love this kind of stuff. The stuff where you just sit there and let the music wash over you. Um, it, it, it's not a soundtrack. It's, it, it's improv. But let me say, first impressions is that if I'd gone to this concert expecting... Well, I wouldn't have been expecting toe tappers. But if I had gone there expecting... A, a gorgeous melodic ex, uh, music, a musical experience. Uh, I would have been disappointed. So it's it's kind of average, even though I do kind of like it, like that sort of stuff. Um, kind of a similar similar fashion. Uh, we've got John Hassell, and this is uh, trumpet uh, psychogeography zones of feeling. Um, oh, there's the hype six sticker. This is really nice. Um, again, needs to explore that a lot more, but we've got uh, Hassel uh, on trumpet and keyboards, and then there's guitar, uh, more keyboards, acoustic and sample percussion and bass. Yeah, it's nice sounding, but I need to, need to dig into that a little bit more. Um, I've, got I've got loads of Miles, but this I picked this one up because it's uh, Miles Davis and uh, Michel Legrand and Dingo. And this has got some spoken word. It's got some typical Miles trumpet. Um, really nice um, fiver. What the hell? Give that a go. Um, I've been wanting this for ages, uh, but I wasn't prepared to pay the price. And it's the Early Years Volume 1 by Tom Waits. Uh, the stuff he did before closing time. Um, still got that typical sound of, uh, of Waits here. You can tell it's early stuff, but it's still good. It's really good. Enjoy that. Although I think that photograph is from later. Um, another tenor is The Monkeys. Is this the debut? Meet The Monkeys. I, I wouldn't have ordinarily picked this up because I've got a version of this. Really old, old version. I, I'm not even sure if it's the original, but it doesn't really matter. This one is a double album set, which has um, kind of radio... Um, Different versions and uh, radio spots, as they call them. Bit of mono, a bit of remix, and so on. Um, but what have we got on here uh, that we will know? Uh, Last Train to Clarksville. Yeah, gonna buy me a dog. Anyway, original stereo mix, and then it's got this bonus disc, so that should be good. This is really good, and this is Radiohead, The Year of the Mud. This is Radiohead in Glastonbury in 1977. Double album, um, Paranoid Andro Android um, period, um, OK Computer as it were. And this is on green marbled vi vinyl. This is really good. It sounds great, a really nice recording. Uh, the packaging is not fantastic, but there you go. You got an idea of what, what you get for your £10 double live album. As I say, the sound is really solid. So uh, it's kind of an unofficial release. Um, do you call them bootlegs these days? I don't know. But you seem to be able to get a hold of them quite easy. Uh, I've not gone into this one. Devandra, Devandra Banhart and Noah uh, Georgeson. Uh, Refuge, which is, uh, well, unopened and untested at this particular point. Uh, the Cars Panorama, another five pound album. Filling a gap in my collection. Again, haven't tried that one yet. Uh, the great rock and soul singer, Daryl Hall with John Oates and the Marigold Sky. Again, oh, that's another double album for five pounds. So I do like Daryl Hall. Uh, this one I paid, uh, by my standard, some serious money. And I bought the Sale on Sailor 1972 uh, Beach Boys album for 20 quid. So it's got two LPs and a seven inch EP within that. And this is used, but it's in excellent condition. And I've been looking at that uh, kind of online for quite some time, but without 
pulling the trigger. But this one finally got a hold of it. This is a, a used, just a couple left, a used um, album that I definitely want, I was definitely interested in. I thought I'm having that, I think seven quid or something. And that's Richie Haven's The End of the Beginning. That's a classic album by him. So I'm really looking forward to digging into that one. And finally, was it two pounds? Doesn't really matter, but it's Sister Sledge. And of course, this is Bernard Edwards and Niall Rogers uh, producing everything and playing most of the instruments, no doubt, with Tony Thompson on um, drums, I expect. But yeah, Sister Sledge, love somebody today. So it was an expensive trip to uh, to a, a record fair and that's me done buying records this week see you on the next video bye for now